Welcome to chapter 2, section 3, and this section is going to be on methods and conditionals. Um, if you have any previous programming experience, then you probably know at least the basics of this, of, of methods or also called functions in other languages. Um, oh, and I wanted to mention, I resized my window because I realized that for in the last video, you might you guys might have a hard time seeing um, what I was typing so I got rid of the rest of my desktop and now we only have the command line showing so just to make it a little more readable um, so uh, what was I saying methods so a method is the same thing as a function it's just you define a, a, a name of the method and then you define exactly what you want the method to do you define that in the body of the method. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick example uh, of how to define a method. And we would do that by typing in def. And then we want to name it. I'm just going to say my meth. All right. So and then enter. And after you click enter, you'll see. Remember, I told you about the levels here. We were on zero, but now we're in the method. We're in the, the definition for the method. And so we, we're at level one. Okay. Uh, and anything we type now is going to happen when we call this method. So I'm just going to say print I am a method. So this is just, I showed you in the last uh, section print just print something out on the screen so this is what I want this method to do so I'm going to type enter I'm going to click enter and you'll see it didn't print it out that's because we're in the method itself where right? we're in the process of defining it so it didn't actually run the print and to end it normally in other languages you'd have uh, open cl print curly braces and then a curly a closed curly braces well in Ruby you don't have the curly braces you just type in end and press enter and then you'll see you get this nil there's nothing here because we weren't asking to return anything um, but we have this nil here it just means we have no errors and, and nothing's wrong so and you'll also see that we went back to zero now we're, we're back at the top level at the zero level um, and now to call it all we have to do here is type in the name of the method so all we have to type in is my meth and we get this we get I am a method printed out because that's what we defined here for the method to do alright now methods can also have something called arguments they are sometimes also called parameters um, dep really depending on which language you're using but how we would do that is the same same thing we're going to do def and then i'm going to call this my addition all right and if to define an um, arguments of parameters we need this to have some um, parentheses and in the parentheses we put our parameters i'm just going to say x that defines one parent one i'm sorry argument and the next argument i'm going to say is y and I'm going to have those two arguments. So I'm going to close the parentheses. And again, we're on the level one. We're, we're on the, the method level. So what I want this to do, this method to do, is to print out x plus y. So I'm sure you, you understand what's going on here and what it's going to do. Um, we just want it to print out x plus y, which I'll show you in a second. Now we just want to end it. That's all we want it to do. So we end it. And now we'll call my addition. And well, we can put anything here because x and y are not defined. We, we're going to define them. So let's just do 5 and 2. Okay, close it up. And then press enter. And you'll see that that method returns 7 and we get that because 5 plus 2 is 7 we defined it to just add the two values together so that's how you would do a method with arguments now the way we're doing this right now isn't the preferred way to do any kind of methods or any usually you do this uh, in an object orientated way 
and what I mean is we just have this this method just it's just a free method it doesn't belong to a class um, it's not well everything is an object in Ruby but we didn't define it as an object um, usually you'd have an object and you would call the methods from that ob from the class um, and we're not doing that here the reason I'm not doing that is because I just wanted to explain and show you uh, a, a method at its core uh, not not paying attention to any of the object oriented stuff uh, which I will be showing you uh, in the last section in this chapter is all about classes and objects so uh, I just wanted to kind of explain that and um, Ruby comes with some predefined methods um, that already do something that we didn't create but most of the time you call that method on an object but like I said everything's an object so we can call these certain methods on anything um, and I'll give you an example of that um, so if we type what I'm gonna do is use the reverse method that comes stock with Ruby uh, and I'm gonna call it on a string and remember if a string needs to have parentheses if it doesn't have parentheses it's looked at as a variable so if we just have these parentheses and I type in Brad now this is just a string with my name in it we want to use the the reverse method on this object which is a string called Brad so we do dot reverse I'm sorry that's not reverse it's hard for me to talk and type at the same time so if we do Brad dot reverse it's given us darb alright so the dot is what tells us to uh, to call this method on this object this string object uh, and you'll see if we do this Brad dot reverse <laughs> Brad dot reverse you'll see it gives us an undefined local variable or method Brad that means that we didn't define a method I mean a variable called Brad so we can't use the reverse function on it now I have another method that comes with Ruby that I want to show you and it is actually called methods and what it does is it prints out all the available methods you could use with a certain type of um, data class so if we take the string Brad and then we do dot methods it prints out all these different methods that, that we can use with a string and you see we have replace, clear, um, get byte, uppercase, upcase, downcase, capitalize uh, all these string methods that we could use on strings and then again if we do say seven dot methods it gives us all the methods we could use that come with Ruby for, uh, for an integer, for a number there's methods like uh, is it odd, is it even, um, round, absolute, and what's really cool is that in this list here, you can see right here my meth and my addition. These are the uh, these are the methods that we created. So it even grabs those, and it knows that it was it it had to do with an integer. So that's where they display it. So uh, it's a really neat way of listing an easy way of finding out all the methods that you could call um, that come with Ruby by default and to add to this uh, this is actually an array they're printing out an array of all the available methods and arrays have actually have a method called sort so we can actually sort this list all we have to do is say uh, let's see seven dot methods dot sort and now you can see it's actually alphabetical so um, very neat so now what I want to do is get into some conditional statements some if statements if something is true then do something um, but first I want to clear all this off and there's a method called there's a system method um, in Ruby and we can in this this interactive Ruby and we can call we can add a a certain argument to it to clear this. So what I want to do is if we do system and then pass CLS as an argument this will clear the screen but what I want to do is actually put this in a custom method and we can just say define uh, 
I don't even want to make it one. We'll just do CLS. We, so we're creating a method called CLS. And in that, we're doing the system, uh, what was it, CLS in end. Okay, so you can see we're defining a method called CLS. And in that method, we're calling this default, this system method with the CLS parameter, which clears the screen. So that's all we're doing. It's just saving us from typing out the actual method name. So, and you'll see we got a nil because nothing nothing went wrong. And if we just do CLS, it clears the screen. So, uh, handy little trick. So what we're gonna do here is do, I wanna show you some conditionals, some if statements. Um, if you have any previous experience in any other programming languages, and you probably know the gist of it, of how to write an if statement. So I'm going to get right into this because we don't have much time left for this video. So let's just assign a variable called name. And let's call it John. So we have this variable called name that holds the value John. So I'm going to write a simple if statement. We'll say if name is equal to John. Remember to use quotes. Now we're not going to use a per, um, curly brace like you would in most languages. We're just going to click, hit enter, and then you can see this number change to a one. That's because we're in the function. We're in the method. I'm sorry, the the if statement. So we want to put here whatever we want to happen if name is John. So if name is John, then we'll print out my name is John. Okay. And now remember we have to end it and you'll see right here it says my name is John now if we do another if statement let's say if name is equal to Jeff all right so we're gonna hit enter now here we're gonna put what to do if the name equals Jeff well we'll say the same thing we'll say print my name is Jeff and remember enter and then end now now you can see that there's nothing here. It didn't say my name is Jeff because the name is not Jeff, it's John. So that's just a, a very simple if statement. Now, now we can also do something called an else, an if else statement, where we can say if this is this, then do this. Else, if, if not that, then do something else. So let's do the same thing uh, using the name again. So we'll do if and actually, you can just press up if you want to go back to um, commands that you've already typed. So we'll say if name is Jeff, then we want to print, yes, I'm Jeff. Okay, so if name is Jeff, we're going to print, yes, I'm Jeff. Hit enter. Else, enter, then we're going to print no I'm John enter and then end and you can see it says no I'm John so that's an if-else statement now now we can also use operators comparison operators like and and or to to validate one or more things using an if statement so for instance let's say we we're talking about cars so we could say we could create a variable called make and we could make that Honda okay so make equals Honda make is the Honda um, and now we could create something else create another variable let's say color equals uh, I don't know red so we know we have two variables make and color which is Honda and red so let's do another if statement we'll say if if make is equal to Honda and now we can use our operator we can use the and operator which is two ampersands so if the make is Honda and the color is red and then same thing press enter and now we'll do whatever we want to do if the make is Honda and the color is red. So we'll just print
yes I want this car okay and we'll end it and it says yes I want this car because it was Honda and red if we do the same thing I'm just gonna do a shortcut with the, the up arrow and let's say blue if the car is a Honda and the color is blue then we want to print no I don't like blue okay and we'll end and you'll see it didn't give us anything because we were only going to print that if if the make was Honda and the color was blue okay so now we can do I'll show you one more thing we could do and we could use an or statement an or operator so an or operator is these two pipe keys um, characters on your keyboard it's right above the enter key and you gotta hold in shift to get it. it's the it's the straight line so here we have if the make is Honda or the color is blue so let's do that and then we'll print uh, I will say it's a Honda uh, I don't know I'm not sure of the color I don't know just anything it doesn't matter what we put here and then end and it, it printed it back because the car is a Honda it's not blue but we said if it's a Honda or it's blue okay so that's the or operator so that's it for our conditionals and comparison operators uh, in the next section we're going to be getting into some object oriented programming which is basically what Ruby was created for so um, I'll see you in the next video